Thank you. Uh, I will uh, do an interesting exercise in time reversal here now. Uh, I, will, I will start with the question of, of feature pornography and say that, that uh, the, the two things I think is, is most important is messing up the cellular paradigm and, and go for, for multi-connectivity. And the second thing I think is most important, actually make evolved mobile broadband and massive machine communication happen in the same system. Uh, that took care of the last agenda item, namely the questions. And now I will go through John's uh, slides backwards, really. Uh, and then I will end with Sarah's slides from yesterday. Uh, and th this is uh, unfortunately not a joke, it's actually true. No. <laughs> well, uh, METIS is an EU FP7 project. We have 29 partners. We're in investigating 140 different technology components, and I won't go through all of them. Uh, time reversal doesn't help that much. Uh, but we started off with, with going through a set of scenarios for, for the future when we started the, the, the METIS project in 2012. And some of them you recognize, it is the amazingly fast that is addressing the data rates, bit, uh, bit rates, capacity, traffic volumes and delays and so on. Great service in a crowd, accessibility, large crowds happen at random places and so on. Best experience follows you, which is mobility. Uh, super real-time and reliable connections. Now things are starting to get a little bit uh, out of the business as usual because now you have delay, reliability and new industrial applications, the critical machine type communications coming in. And then you have the ubiquitous things communicating and this is where we got bashed this morning in the, uh, the MMC, the massive machine communication sessions. But here we want to have many simple devices actually working in a cellular systems. Now, uh, these, these five scenarios are then concretized in a set of test cases to actually test the METIS concept towards the end. And when you set off doing scenarios, you have to be really, really humble because you sit down, you think, and you come up with, yeah, this should be really the killer application for the future. And the only thing you really know for sure is that the user are going to go perpendicular to what you think. Uh, we learned that in 2G with the voice uh, being nice, but SMS is being really the, the killer application. So what we're doing for 5G is, you, c you can interpret it a little bit uh, from the MMC session, this, I'm, I'm, I'm using the, the METIS acronym of MMC for uh, Massive Machine Type Communication, uh, that, that you, we're building a middleware, and that should be your, your platform as an APA uh, app programmer, where you could actually use the features you want to. Uh, but you need to have scenarios to get people's mind going from one point in one direction. And these are the meta scenarios. Now, as, as we heard in, in John's slides uh, towards the end, uh, is, is that these scenarios translate into a set of different technical requirements, improving traffic volumes, imp uh, increasing the data rates, reducing the latency down to the tactile internets, mi millisecond delays, and so on. Uh, these these are, are, are well-known and, and um, a kind of extension of already ongoing work. And that is, of course, addressing the enhanced or evolved mobile broadband services. There are also a set of uh, requirements that are not business as usual for, for, for the uh, cellular telecom vendors. And that is the latencies, the reliabilities, and the massive number of devices. And here we come to the answer, what, what would be the two things? And this is really combining these, because here, here we now have different types of machine type communications, the critical one and the massive numbers. And we heard earlier in this discussion that they have different, di they have different requirements. And as we will see, they will also have different solutions. Now, if you're given such a wide range of requirements, you shouldn't go about solve it with one single system. Uh, and the way METIS is set up to solve these challenges is that we have a range of horizontal topics, which is going across the research topics. As I mentioned, we have 140 different technology components being, uh, being interference, uh, being researched in a more OSI layer style. And then we have the horizontal topics or vertical, as we call them when, when we're discussing industry, you should always try to keep your, your audience a little bit on their toes by flipping dimensions every once in a while. The, one, the, the horizontal topics we're dealing with is the device-to-device -device communication. And this is really an enabler for so many things. And the device-to-device -device communication 
involves communication between stationary nodes, between mobile nodes, between uh, machines, as, as we heard before, and the solutions are not the same. We have the massive machine communication that is a separate horizontal topic in Metis, and we have identified three different ways of, of addressing this massive machine type communication. Direct access to an e-node B or a base station from a device far out in the field to this base station through a gateway, which might be a more capable node such as smartphone, or through direct machine-to-machine -to -machine access here. One thing that is common to these is that, that in all cases, the massive machine is, is targeting the low power, power constrained or energy constrained, I should say, to be correct here, uh, devices. Ultra dense networks is a horizontal topic that is, is more addressing the, the uh, improvement of, of data rates and volumes. You can say that that is business as usual, it is ongoing already in, in 3D PP and so on. What we are doing in METIS is that we're trying to do away with some of the fundamental limits when it comes to pilot pollutions and so on. Uh, we are investigating in, in, uh, in, uh, in general three different aspects. The access uh, links, the wireless self-backhauling, integrating, for instance, uh, multi-hop networking in there, and the node integration, how to make this work. And I will come back to that a little bit later. We have a horizontal topic on moving networks, which is, is uh, uh, vehicles uh, that can be driving around and you have to have a mobile backhaul. You can have them parked and they can function as temporary access nodes, as, as a, uh, as a uh, UDN node that you don't know where it will show up at the next time. We also have the mission critical vehicle to X communication. That is a typical device-to-device uh, -device communication where you have strong requirements and reliability and so on. We have the ultra-reliable communication that is really addressing how do you make a reliable service? And that is on, on short terms, down to milliseconds, on long terms where you have a massive number of users and in emergency situations where the infrastructure is, is partially damaged or down. So these are, these are the five horizontal topics we're pursuing in Metis. Now, we're in the process now of building our, our Metis concept and we have developed uh, horizontal topic specific concepts for these and and they are publicly available on our Metis website and I won't show you the link that is an intelligence test you have to google uh, uh, and what we're saying is now when it comes to the overall system concept design is what we foresee is that this is not one system one solution that fits everything and here you come into a little bit of, of your mindset so far a system, a generation, has always been a new rat. This is different with the 5G because you have to have multiple rats because otherwise you will, you will construct a duck. It can fly, it can walk, and it can swim, but it won't do anything particularly good. Uh, and we would like our system to do all these things, but they should be good at it. This means that you need to have an integrated multi-rat system. For instance, for the UDN, for the Evolved Mobile Broadband, you need something that is spectrum flexible into the millimeter waves. And we heard all the pros and cons in the previous speak, speaker's uh, talk, and, and we heard it before. We need a low overhead MMC rat that can be fitted in here, because as, as uh, William was saying, a, bit is a, a transmitted bit is a bit closer to death. And I, I think that that is the re really interesting. We had a... We had a, a Swedish writer that wrote stuff in Swedish that I could relate to you, but it wouldn't make sense, so I'll, I'll, I'll stop. <laughs> we also have, have air interfaces for, for low latency, and, and as I mentioned here, we have, we have the vehicle to X communication, we have the ultra short term, uh, ultra reliable communication, where we need different air interfaces. Now, an air interface doesn't really make up a system by itself. It needs to fit into something. And here, one of the things that Metis is pursuing is, is the notion of, of a dynamic RAN or, or a RAN 2.0, where you have these ultra-dense network nodes, you have the moving network nodes, and in particular the nomadic network nodes, that, that provides a multi-layer connectivity uh, the nodes themselves can be turned on and off. The nomadic nodes shows up at different locations and being turned on and off. Uh, we will split the, the, the control and, and uh, user planes uh, 
and have a multi-layer and multi-connectivity network. Device to device is also an, an integrated part of this, and, and we heard discussions uh, over the lunch here that, that it's really hard to make up what, what to make out of device to device. Uh, if, if you want it or, or you don't want it, depends depends on who you are. But I think it's really, really an important aspect. In some in some cases, it's really crucial to provide the functionality you need. In other cases, it, it's it's more a, an added value to offload your, your traffic. Now, we heard a lot on on the different enablers uh, before on on how to build this. I think that that a spectrum toolbox that really makes this flexible over the entire range of, of accessible spectrum is in interesting. Uh, mobility management, uh, we need to have node activation and deactivation in particular for the dynamic RAN. And one thing that I think is also interesting and very important in addressing the, the energy performance or energy efficiency of, of the system is that we need to start to think of an ultra lean signaling scheme here. because. As we're doing today, we're, we're announcing our presence all the time, and we're quite chatty about it as well. Whereas in, 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 a, in a system where you have an enormous amount of access nodes, you cannot be as chatty. First of all, you, you will interfere the heck out of yourself, and you will, will consume a lot of energy. So you have to turn the, the thing around. The, the, the network nodes have to be silent. Possibly the UE will be the one that says, hey, I want to communicate. Sure, go ahead. Uh, or you have to come up with something with, with a longer DRX cycle. And I think this is really important for energy performance, and it's also applicable for the other services that we want to achieve on, on reliability and latency and so on, th that, that this should really be fitted into the, this ultra-lean signaling. Now, I mentioned that we have multiple, uh, multiple rats, and I think that the 5G radio access should really be considered as, as one integrated access. We heard that, that, that as, as a user, you're not particularly interested in, in selecting which rat you should go on. You, ha you have a message that you, you want to send, or you have information that you want to retrieve. And through which rat you do that, should not, you should not have to bother about that. So, so, so the radio access should be one integrated network providing a seamless mobility, uh, a r common resource management, and so on, and, and to, pr tr to support your user experience. Now. The radio access network is one part of it, and here is when we do the time reversal back to yesterday, because I believe that you already saw this. Uh, but now you, put, you have to put your, your 5G radio access in, into a larger perspective, and I think that when we're, we're looking at the future network, the, the uh, split between the RON and the core network does not necessarily look the same as it does today. Uh, there may not even be a split between the RON and the core network. Uh, this is a research project, you know, we have a lot of questions, uh, we start to have answers, but, but you should always be curious. Uh, but to support the radio access, you need common uh, 5D core network functionalities, you need a common 5D management and transport. And I, I won't mention so much uh, about the, 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 the management and transport, more that, that it's really important when we, we're uh, talking about, about uh, some of the toolboxes and, and flexible deployments. But the service-centric is that we heard here uh, over the day that different services have quite different needs. And what, what is important here is that the network, the, the common 5G core, should provide you a set of, of APIs that, that you as, as a network customer can provide your application, be it for mobile broadband, for MMC or so on, and give you a little bit more control of, of your share of the network. The flexible, de flexible deployment means that now if you're service-centric, you actually get to move around where you do your processing. If you want to do processing close to the, to the uh, radio access network for low latency, or if you move it back home uh, in, in a centralized manner for control and, and ease of, of upgrades and so on. All this, you need a, 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 a toolbox of, of common tools. You have your different rats in the 5G access, you have your legacies, you have your fixed access and so on. Uh, you have all these services. And given these common toolbox, you as an as, as a operator or as a third-party customer, you get a slice of this core network and you can optimize your services in there using this toolbox. Now. NFV and SDN is not really 5D, it, it will happen, it is already happening. But this is, these are tools 
that are really important for us in order to be able to realize this vision of, of a flexible radio network. And <coughs> excuse me. This gives you the ability of moving your functionalities around and providing slices to different different parties, to third parties and so on. Now, this is where we're at. Uh, we're almost back to the beginning of the Johann uh, Johannes Berry Summit uh, opening yesterday. I will now do a leap out of the, my, my time reversal study and I will look where are we and wh wh what is the future. Uh, Metis now has about a year left, and we have uh, concepts l looking like this. And if you've been around the block for a few years, you know that, that things look the same. And, and we had a, a, a series, uh, we ha had a series of, of uh, research uh, programs, the, the uh, Frames project in FP7, we had the Winner project, we now have the Metis project at the end of FP7. And what is coming next is the Horizon 2020, which is the next EU research funding project. And in there we have the 5D public-private partnership that, that is a, a, a consortium that sets a strategic agenda for the future. I will just give a short, short overview of that, and I will also tell you how I see that the fundamental framework that METIS has been doing and will provide will be then carried on in, in, uh, into the future by these Hor Horizon 2020 projects. This one didn't display really well, did it? Uh, but uh, <laughs> the 5D PPP structure consists of 16 different projects in four different strands. And the, the strand that I'm most interested in is the radio network architecture and technologies that is here mentioned by a very bad P1 to a slightly better P7. Now, that consists of, of uh, 16 different topics. Uh, and the ones that are, are relevant for, for the wireless guys like myself is P1 through P7 here, which is wireless systems, various air interfaces, and so on. And now, as I mentioned, Metis, we, ha we are developing a concept for a 5G system as we see it. And METIS will end in about a year. And then the ideas and, and the results of METIS will be carried on into the future by these seven, seven areas down here, each picking up a little piece of, of METIS results and carrying them into something that will eventually be an existing rollout deployment and highly successful 5G systems. Thank you so much for your attention.